Okay, we are being recorded. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the teaching and learning call on Wednesday, May 15th, 2019. My name is Tricia Gordon. I am facilitating the call today, and I'm delighted to see all of you um, joining. Uh, let's see. The first thing, item of business is to give any project updates or an announcements. Does anybody have either one of those? Hi, this is Wilma. Um, just a quick announcement about the um, hotel room block for Open Aperio. They actually extended it through the end of this week. So if you haven't booked your room, you can still get in on the um, conference rate if you uh, if you go there um, before Friday of this week to book your room. Great. So, yep. Thank you. That's exciting and good for anyone who hasn't yet reserved a room. Um, okay, anything else? Anyone have any other announcements? Okay, then uh, we're going to take just a, about five minutes to get to review a couple of JIRAs that um, have been requested. And so here's, I'm going to paste this one in. This is 41366. It's about private comments between instructors and students in the forums tool. Um, and I do not have a note as to who um, asked us to review that. So um, if it was you, could you come on and, and give us some, that looks like maybe Tiffany. Yeah. And Tiffany is on the call. Tiffany, can you? Um, Walk us through this one. Maybe you don't have audio set up, Tiffany. I'm not sure. You created the Jira, but don't remember asking about it and cannot talk right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this one is a waiting review. It hasn't been reviewed. It's um, a Jira requesting a um, feature to allow private comments between the instructor and a student. Um, instructors have requested this capability. Um, so anybody have, Tiffany has posted a lot of uh, details about what currently happens and the pr proposed feature would be to add a private checkbox. That includes some explanatory text to the user, whoever that is, if it's the instructor or the student, etc., on what this means. And some mock ups are in that JIRA. So I do not know who requested that we talk about this, but um, it seems like a reasonable request. Yes, and Tiffany does have a list of considerations near the bottom of that JIRA. I suppose if this is something that you want to um, want work to be done on, then um, go ahead and log into JIRA and vote for it. And, and if you have other comments about things to consider or um, additional ideas on how this might be designed, um, please comment in the JIRA. Kathy Feller says some of their instructors have requested this feature as well. So it sounds like um, it's something that folks would like to have. Oh, just as a quick note, um... Laura Geckler actually brought this up, um, I believe, on the core team call earlier this week. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the UX group has also been reviewing JIRAs, and um, what we've done in UX is we have a, another label. Um, there's the UX label, which is just to kind of flag it for, for the UX 
folks to look at. Um, but then we add a label after we look at it called UX review so that we can search by labels to see which ones we've already talked about. So I don't know if that's something that teaching and learning might want to do as well, because a lot of times we have Jira loses and then we don't remember which ones we've actually done. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually Just a suggestion. Listed, yeah, they, the Jira's are usually listed in the Etherpad, but I understand nobody wants to go through all the Etherpad notes to find the right Jira and see if it's been discussed or not. I, I, that's will, a really good idea. I will say that Teaching and Learning Group also comments on the Jiras that we review. So if we've forgotten or if it's been some time since Jira has gotten some love, maybe we should review it again. Yeah, and that is a good point. So we could add a, a TL review. Is that what UX is? Yeah, we is. just added a, as a label so that it would be easier to search for it with a filter because the comments are good. We usually add comments, but those are a little harder to find because you have to actually go into the Jira to see them. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just T or UX reviewed. So we know yeah. that UX has looked at it at least once. Okay, that's helpful. Um, and I think that's a great idea. Um, it doesn't mean we can't review it again, as Adam pointed out. Sometimes we need to revisit, but um, but it is helpful to be able to filter and find those quickly. So um, I don't know who can create new labels. Can anyone or in Jira? Anyone? Um, okay. Yeah, I think anyone. Right. Okay, cool. Well, I'll be happy to take that task on. And if I have any problems, I will reach out to you, Wilma, or somebody. <laughs> or Sean, maybe. All right, thanks. Um, then we had a second JIRA. Um, let me paste that into the chat as well. This is a test and Quizzes cannot preview assessment issue. Uh, let's go look at that. And Adam, I think this was the one you just asked asked us to look at. Is that right? Oh, Heather, I'm sorry. You found Something you found during QA testing, okay, last weekend. Okay, and so it, let's read the description. So instructors are unable to preview a draft of their assessments and tests and quizzes after selecting preview and the assessment, they are placed back on the main tests and quizzes screen. Oops, that's, that's a little bug that needs fixing for sure. Anything else you want to bring up about that, Heather? Just want to bring it to people's attention. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. And people should feel free to comment on stack 41742. Let me paste that in to the chat. It's also in the Etherpad. This is a feature request for feedback for a feedback synoptic tool um, as discussed on the TNL call. So very, please comment. Yeah, go ahead, Adam. Very briefly on last week, on the last teaching and learning call, we discussed as a side conversation the idea of a synoptic tool in people's workspace to uh, bubble up comments on assignments, comments in forums, uh, comments in the grade book, grading action, et cetera. So that way students would have a sense of actions and communication that were taken between an instructor and the student. So the feature mm -hmm. request is there, but comment as you see fit. And, and well, so one of the comments I would have, and I, I can paste this in later, is um, does the bullhorns functionality kind of address this? Anyway, just a thought. I'm going to 
put it in there and Josh is reminding me we need to move on. Uh, Miguel is going to need all the time available to uh, for his topic. So I apologize for cutting us off, but let's move on. Miguel, I'm going to give you presenter privileges and uh, let's see, make presenter. There you go. Uh, so you should be able to share your screen and we'll go ahead and move into Miguel's presentation. Miguel's going to be talking to us about multimedia assignment submissions and Office 365. Um, so thank you, Miguel, for joining us and please go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, what's well, Josh? <laughs> a view into oh. the matrix. <laughs> Am I back? Yes, you are back. Thank you. Look, looks like I entered the mat the matrix. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a misclick. Well, um, thank you so much for for attending this meeting. I would like to talk very fast about three new features that we're working on uh, recently. Um, one feature is the OneDrive integration. Uh, another feature is the assignments, audio and video submissions. And the third one is a proof of concept, which is budgets in Sakai. Um, I don't think I, it will take me 40 minutes. Uh, I will be pretty fast. I will make some demos, provide uh, general information on the, on the keys of, of every feature. And of course, we will have some, some time to discuss and, 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 and provide comments and and feedback okay the first one will be the onedrive integration which belongs to the cloud storage uh, functionalities um, <clears throat> it was developed for the hotel school de Hague, which is one of our clients um, their students host files in their onedrive account because they use microsoft onedrive and um, all the student and instructor community uh, will like to embed resources and get files from their OneDrive accounts. But um, we think that this feature uh, can be extended to other providers because use cases are similar. Um, during our, our, our requirements and, and analysis, we decided to integrate the Sakai file picker because um, it's used in multiple tools. So, you can embed files in attachments, in, in announcements, you can embed files in forums, you can embed files in lessons, but basically Sakai file picker uh, is shared by those tools. So um, you can use the integration in, in multiple tools. The first time a student or instructor access uh, needs to link the OneDrive account because ask for permissions. This is, uh, pretty common in, in most software pieces. Once you want to integrate a um, cloud storage provider, you have to link your account. This is pretty common. Um, our mission is contribute everything for Sakai 20. And of course, we're looking for community feedback and, and, and contributors, okay? Um, I would like to make the demo. This is my OneDrive account. It's completely empty because I'm not a user and not a big fan of, of these products. Um, and this is one of our hotel school test in instances. Um, as I said, uh, if you want to post an announcement or you want to post an assignment, there's a component to add attachments. So if I click in announcement, the possibility to add an attachment, we added a third option, which is the OneDrive integration. As I said, this is Office 365, but it can be Google Drive, it can be Dropbox, it can be Box, or a different provider. And as I said, we need to uh, link our account and provide permissions the first time. Okay, then if I go to assignments, then it's mostly the same. Uh, if I try to create a new assignment, um, This is not related with development. 
this is our our account sir our our staging server that has a, a different authentication it's not public so let me go to announcements looks like i'm in a in a in a loop this is a specific configuration of our server because it's not public i can test here so if i try to add an announcement blah 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 then I can add an attachment. So the first time I need to configure my Office account. So it redirects me to my Office account. And I was already locked. As you can see, I'm locked in my account. And I have some files, these images, these text files. So my account is officially integrated. OK, and I can go back. So the first time, the user needs to log in and needs to share permissions. Basically, uh, Sakai wants to access your files so once you grant permissions then your account is linked so the next time you try to embed a resource then you'll find your your files okay so if i go to my onedrive account then i will find lists txt office text official text file profile profile print screen roster roster so i have the exactly the same files okay and and we have two options we can attach a copy and attach as a link uh, if you attach a copy it downloads the file and hosts it in sakai so the the file it's duplicated so if you update the file in sakai the onedrive file remains the same and if you update the uh, OneDrive file, the Sakai file uh, is not updated. And the second possibility is link. The difference is link uh, links to the OneDrive file. So you can maintain the OneDrive file directly. So if you paste the link in multiple places, then you only need to maintain one file. So I'm going to touch a copy. And at the same time, I'm going to touch a link of the same file. And, and I can do the same with, with, with this one and with this one. So at the top of the screen, we'll find the items that I've attached and I'm gonna post them. So as you can see, we have a file that has uh, three kilobytes of size and the other ones are links. So I can post the assignment, the announcement and then this downloads the file, and this downloads the file too. But the main difference is this file is hosted in OneDrive. It's not hosted in Sakai. And it happens the same with this file. So I can open the file, no problem. But this file is just a link. It's hosted in OneDrive. So if I update these materials in OneDrive, the Sakai files will be updated. If I update this file in OneDrive, this file will not be affected because it's a local copy. OK? And uh, that's it. So if I access, for example, if I put. We have a this. couple of questions also in the chat here, Miguel. Um, one of them is, does, does this allow you to open and edit the OneDrive file and save the changes directly back to OneDrive or I assume that would be the link option. Yeah. Is that is that basically what happens? Exactly. And how about permissions for students? I guess once you've, do you have to make these files public in OneDrive before they can be viewable by others in your no. site? No, okay. it's done. It's done by the API. Okay. Because in OneDrive, when you grant that the file. Um, um is linked then it changes the permissions automatically you don't have to do anything okay. <clears throat> as i said i uploaded now a new file called security 
okay so if i go to my and create another announcement i will not find that file because we use akachi to not make a lot of calls of a content that doesn't change too much so we have the refresh button so once i refresh then gets the file because um, makes a new a new request we did this because uh, microsoft in this particular case microsoft can block uh, if you raise i, I guess 1000 calls but we don't want problems with the api most of the time this content is static and uh, the catch is, is about 10 minutes so every 10 minutes is refreshed so now i have this file and i can attach a copy okay mm -hmm. and at the end i can revoke the access here so sakai doesn't have permissions to list the files anymore but the files will remain linked because you granted permissions the first time so you will not lose anything it's just you revoke your access and uh, you revoke the access to the files so you can list them anymore you can't link them anymore but the files are linked and are on place so you don't need to to worry about that or even you can change the provider in the future and use box or a different provider we have a, a question about um, the behavior when you click on a linked file like official.txt we want to see that again so that what did mm -hmm. that do did it download the file or it downloads the file it downloads the file yeah. so if it's a download and you edit it then it it isn't updating it's not syncing back to the original with the updates is that In correct no 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 it's is if you update the content uh you're downloading the updated version of the of the file well and it, yeah, but do you have to update it in OneDrive? you can't get yeah, to it course. from here like you can't edit from if, it's, this link. if it's linked you need to update it in OneDrive. Okay. if it's okay. linked so you can't you can't actually edit the file from here you'd have to go into OneDrive to do that yeah because okay. it's linked it's linked that it's pretty useful when you want to let's say uh have multiple contents and shared everything across courses and you have only one content in one place so you only need to update the the content and will be updated in all courses that's how it works we have another yeah. question oh i'm sorry go ahead wilma yeah I, it is convenient to be able to do that it just would be nice if you could get back to it to edit it like if you i don't know right clicked and went said edit file but so I know that would be harder. <laughs> yeah. Um, Miguel, I know you said that um, anybody in your site can now view these files, mm -hmm. um, but we have a, a clarifying question about this. Does it, so does this um, permissioning through Sakai also give everyone in OneDrive access to that link? I assume not no okay no so it doesn't it doesn't control anything in OneDrive itself it's just between OneDrive and sakai yeah it's it's when in multiple providers like dropbox or OneDrive, when you try to share the link it generates a it generates a link and the ones that have the link can access the file okay gotcha so the api you don't need to do anything in OneDrive. The API generates a, a public link. Okay. And that link is used in Sakai. And it can be used in any tool, correct? Like forums or yeah, um, of anywhere. Course. Yeah. Okay. So, and the user in OneDrive can revoke permissions. So the link will be broken. Will, okay. It's exactly like Dropbox. When you share a file with someone, mm -hmm. it generates a link in the app you can send the link to everyone through email or through whatsapp and then they can access the content but you can go to your dropbox and revoke the access so everyone will lose the access i see and if 
so anybody who has that link, so if you were to, for example, right click on one of these files, these linked files and copy the, the link, you could actually share that with anybody, whether they're in your Sakai site or not. Is that the case? Not really, because as you can see, links are from Sakai. So, ah, so they are tied to the site. It's ah. a resource, it's a Sakai resource. Okay. It's inside attachments. So Sean wants to know when revoking access, that revokes all link access across all tools and sites, correct? Um, revokes access to list your files, but not file access. So you, you okay. can, okay. Sakai can't, Sakai can't list your files anymore mm -hmm. unless you provide access again, okay. but the links are still valid. So okay. you don't break any content. Sean, does that, did that answer your question? And Adam is just clarifying. So revoking file access, you'd have, so Sean, Adam, I'm sorry, Adam, I don't think that's correct. When you go in to, when you click the revoke access button, you're just revoking the list of, you're just saying, I'm, I'm no longer allowed to see the list of my files in OneDrive. What, is, I, what, what I was saying is that if a user actually wanted to revoke access to an Office 365 file, they could go into Office 365 and change the permissions on that file. And right. what, any links that existed in Sakai would no longer pull up that content because it would no longer be a publicly shared file. Sounds right to me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so if you want to uh, remove access to anything you've already made available in your Sakai sites, then you would do that in OneDrive or Office 365, correct? Yeah. Basically, uh, we say revoke, but it's mostly uh, unlink. It's the opposite of link. So the first time you have to link your account and you can unlink it. Mm -hmm. But in, in terms of technologies, grant access or revoke access. So first time you provide access to your files and the second time you revoke access to your files. Right, okay. But when you link files, you allow, uh, you you create a new link for that, and that link still valid. So you need to go file by file. Mm -hmm. It's most um, cloud storage providers were like that. It's like Dropbox. If you share files with people in Dropbox, um, you have to change the file permissions to yeah. invalidate the links. And same in, in in Google Drive. When you generate a public link, everyone that has the link can access and right. you have to change the permissions on that file mm -hmm. to revoke the links. We have some comments in the chat about um, labeling of buttons to, to clarify their meaning. And I'm hoping that Josh or somebody on the long site team is capturing those comments for you to. Um... Yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Um, there's but, a YouTube video. There's a yeah, there's a YouTube video explaining how the feature works, and we're happy to receive the comments. So once this is in 20, assuming it gets into 20, um, it's just going to be an option. Does one have to do any um, anything behind the scenes to get it to work, or? Yeah, it, it just... will be it will be disabled by default. Okay, so it will be property. disabled, and you can enable it or you can extend it to other providers and enable other providers. We are still thinking about it. Yeah, gotcha. <clears throat> because um, as I said, we have some next steps and the roadmap. We want to do UI improvements. Uh, we want to develop a new picker for lessons. This is not developed yet, but we want to include a picker in lessons so you can embed contents directly. Uh, mm -hmm. Main difference is when you link a file or when you link um, a copy of the file, then it's just a file. But in lessons, 
we want to embed the resource directly because uh, OneDrive generates an embed, an embed code. So this makes things easier because you don't need to embed images or you don't need to embed uh, documents. Uh, Microsoft generates an embed uh, object and we want to embed it directly. So we want to create here a new option, which is embed a OneDrive document, let's say an Excel file or PowerPoint or Word, and then it generates the embed object directly for the student or the instructor. And one advantage of this is that the document will be uh, can be edited through, through Sakai because it's embed. And the owner of the object can access to the document and, and edit it. So we, they can edit in real time. We're working on, on, on that. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the new, uh, the, of the next steps that we want to do. Also, we're testing against OneDrive Business, which is different from personal accounts. I think they call it Enterprise. I don't know what's the commercial name, but I think it's OneDrive Enterprise. We're also testing the SharePoint integration. We want to improve the implementation because we received comments from other members of the community. Um, our main goal is release a pilot in July and contribute the changes uh, in August. Fantastic. Uh, there's a lot going on in the chat, Miguel, and so you'll probably uh, want to capture it to, um, to review the the comments and some of the questions, but I think uh, this is a huge um, benefit to to everybody. So thank you guys for sharing this work and doing this work. Well, it's still an MVP, and, and we're mm -hmm. still dealing with the use cases, but the MVP works, and they are pretty excited to how it works because they can embed the contents. So we just, you know, I, we want you to move on to your other topics, but one more quick question. Um, does this take any work on the OneDrive side? No. Oh, fantastic. I mean, you only, you only need to configure the, uh, the application. <clears throat> okay. Very cool. It's okay. very basic. Uh, it's very basic configuration. Basically, it registers Sakai as a... Mm -hmm but it needs to be done once and not by students or instructors. It's IT, per, IT, IT personal. Yeah. Okay, great. It's basically okay. register Sakai as an app. Yeah. So uh, we can go ahead and move on to your next topic. I Perfect. Think I think we were oh so great assignments and I think we we're going to skip badges because that was the last um, TNL TNL call that was covered then but I'm I'm not sure if you have something different to say so anyway go ahead perfect uh, the next feature the next feature uh, I want to talk about is incorporates audio and video submissions in assignments because same client Hotly School The Hague. Uh, wants this feature and they don't want to make it very, very complex. They don't want um, to use YouTube. They don't want to use software like Kaltura or, or other external software because their use cases are very simple and the, um, the video lengths are very short. So this feature is created to record very short videos using the um, student's hardware directly because use software like YouTube or, or other providers uh, requires the user upload a file, generate a link, link the file, et cetera. It's a bit, uh, a bit complex. And uh, with this feature, the user can do it directly. It's powered by the open source uh, record RTC components. So the students don't need to install any additional plugins in the browser. Um, the project is very well documented. I think it's recordrtc.org. Recordrtc.org. Uh, there's a demo, official documentation, 
the plugin is well supported. Uh, it has more than 29,000 downloads per month. Uh, and it's done following good practices and it's supported by most browsers of the market. Uh, Chrome supports all the video and the problem is pro Windows 10 in Edge because only supports audio. So we are supporting exactly the same because we rely on this component, which is which is open. Um, I limited to three minutes the um, the video length because it's our Sakai file policy by, policy by default. Uh, as you may know, the, the default policy is 20 megabytes. So uh, by default, it's limited to three minutes, and this can be. This can be extended to more space if your system administrator or your hosting provider allow, allows it. Exactly the same, the contribution is targeted for Sakai 20 and we are looking for community feedback and contributors, okay? I've done a, a survey in the community and most of the institutions like this feature, but they want longer videos and they were they want more a more complete solution so it's probably out of the scope of our project and out of the scope of this feature because this feature is designed for short videos and a very very fast workflow so the student can record something and the, instru the instructor can watch something and grade something okay i'm gonna do a fast demo here in my local environment let's close this so now I'm gonna access as an admin and I'm gonna access one site and in assignments. Record your lovely face. And there's a new submission, which is audio and video submission. Okay, it's the sixth one is a new option and you just need to click it. For the moment, there's no additional configuration. There's no uh, complex interface. It's just, I want the student to record audio or video. Okay, so I'm gonna post and it's simple as that. Okay, so uh, it's posted. So now I'm gonna log in as a student and then I can access this, the assignments. And I found my new assignment, record your lovely face, okay? So this is pretty simple because you only have two buttons, uh, start recording or stop recording. And there's some instructions that maybe, maybe change. Um, if you record a new video, then the, the previous recording will be lost. Uh, please use the video recorder to submit your assignment and the recorder works with most modern browser except Edge, okay? And this recorder will not record more than three minutes for performance reasons. So I can start recording, which is very simple. And you can look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> and I can submit or record uh, another, another clip. So I can start recording. and the first clip will be lost. And I can do the process infinite times. Once the video is ready, I think the video is, is ready for the submission, then I can submit. Okay, so now it's submitted. I see my submission and then I can go as, as, an, as an admin or as an instructor. The first time when a, when a student wants to record a video, ask for permission, browser permission. So you need to grant access in your browser. So allow Sakai to record my camera, allow Sakai to access my microphone. Then if you grant permissions, you are able to record the video, which is very simple. As I said, uh, by default, three minutes because it's the Sakai policy, but it can be extended. But the feature is not intended to record an hour or edit video, add subtitles, add multiple translations. That's more complex, okay? So these are my students and there's a new submission right now. So I can go to the submission and I see the video so I can play it. 
as you may see, this is the second video that the student recorded. The first video was discarded. I have the file here and then I can grade. Okay, very good. You don't look very tired. <laughs> so I can save and release the student. Okay. And the student can see the grade. I can see the video again. And the workflow, the usual workflow of assignments that you can uh, you can set a resubmission and you can allow a resubmission, you can allow multiple attempts, it works. So you can record multiple submission attempts and the structure will see the last video. So you can provide, you can record multiple videos within an attempt and you can record multiple attempts. The instructor will see only the last version. Nice. And that's it. Um, a couple of questions here in the chat. Uh, can users, so let's say a student, can they preview a recording before submitting? I think yeah. I, I saw that they could play it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Um, I don't know if, I think it's unlimited attempts. Let me try. I think I sent unlimited uh, attempts. No. Let's let's create a new assignment pretty fast. I'm gonna be very fast so we can answer more questions. Blah, 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 blah. So let's go uh, still in the game. So this is the video. So I can watch it, I can watch it again, I can watch it again, mm -hmm. I can do full screen, okay? So I can watch it in full screen and um, I can record it again, mm -hmm. okay? So if I click start recording, this is the second version. So I hear myself and I can, again, watch it infinite times and I can record another version or submit, okay? All right, we have a couple of other questions. Um, can you, can the instructor download the video? Yep. Or, yes. Yeah? Okay. Yes, the instructor uh, has two options. This is stored in Sakai um, as attachment. So the video is, is like a regular attachment and I didn't submit in this assignment. I submitted in the other one. Okay. So you have the video and you have here a file. And this file <clears throat> here, this file is exactly the video. So if you open a new tab and you put the video there, you can watch it outside Sakai. So you can download the video, okay? Because it's like a regular attachment. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I assume because of that, it would be included if you chose to download all, you would get those attachments in mm -hmm. in that download as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, I, think, I think there's options to put the attachment link here too, in this player. So there are more options. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. The um, <clears throat> so we've 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 already got some some new ideas for this functionality <laughs> in the chat. One one is um, Wilma is loving how quick and easy it is to record, and it would be great to have similar functionality for instructors to record their feedback as audio or audio video. Um, mm -hmm. any, any thoughts around that? Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So the what I like about this is we are using the record RTC component, which can be used in across tools. Mm -hmm. So we can embed the same recorder on the same player in multiple tools. So oh, nice. this is included in the um, a student's submission page, but it can be included 
in the assignment edit or even in the submission grading page. Right. Or okay. even in, 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 in test and quizzes or forums, etc. So the same recorder, same component can be included in multiple tools and we only need to maintain one recorder. It's not special, very, very special. Right. Nice. That's very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Tiffany wants to know, can the instructor upload all and include video recording for feedback? So it, it sounds like, Tiffany, I, I, hmm, uploading all, maybe, I don't know. It sounds like this recorder can be embedded in various places, so possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but we're 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 helping students and instructors, so they don't need to embed it in anything. I mean, uh, we generate the the code once we detect that it's an audio video submission. Yeah. So that's why the instructor only sees the video directly. I see. Josh wants to know what would you estimate as the dev time needed to include the recording feature in in the other tools. For, you know, for for any other tool, let's just pick one. How how what what kind of developer time would that require to? And the the, the reason I ask the question is, uh, you know, once we know this, some other institution might want to sponsor that. You know, we're working with you, Miguel. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the tool. I'm very afraid of tests and quizzes. <laughs> I mean, it depends. In tests and quizzes, if we reuse an existing question type. But uh, it didn't. It didn't take too long to integrate with assignments. Um, I think this feature took me like three days maximum. The complete feature in assignments, even selecting the component. So the component is is has been chosen, and we have uh, documentation about how to use it. So I don't think it will take too long. And at the same time, we are creating a feature for another university to record audio in the profile to pronounce the name. And we're going to release that feature this week or next week. So that will be the second example of using this component in other tool. And as I said, we, start, we started working on this two days ago. And probably the feature will be released before this Friday. So it will take like three days. Thinking more about the, the sponsorship question, maybe the way to play it is if institutions are interested in having this functionality embedded in, in other tools in Sakai, maybe, you know, maybe they ought to raise their hands and with, with Miguel as opposed to, you know, and, and approach it that way. I mean, so if, if anyone listening says, ah, my institution must have this in tool X, then that's a conversation you can have with, with Miguel that will be to everyone's benefit. Yep. As I said, um, the second example of using this this feature will be released this week, and is recording uh, the student name in the profile so instructors can listen in the roster. So, because for you maybe Miguel Pellicer is very hard to pronounce, but if I record Miguel Pellicer, then you can listen my name one hundred times and say it right, and don't say Miguel Pellicer, Nimi, you know. <laughs> That's the main objective of this feature. So, and we will use the same recorder. Are you guys, um, I was busy reading um, chat posts, but are you guys talking about using this for pronouncing na names in roster? Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be so awesome. Yeah, exactly. We are doing the profile changes right now. And next week we will work on the roster uh, update using wow. the audio recordings from the profile. Yeah, nice. So, yeah, so instructors can record the pronunciation, students can record the pronunciation, and, and, and instructors can listen the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. And again, we, we received comments about the wording, the messages, and the instructions, and we will be happy to review them. We want to improve the implementation because we received some comments around that. And we we have the same time, timeline of the Office 365. We want to use this feature in September in the university. So we are going to pilot it in July. And we want to contribute the changes in August. Great. Wow. 
So this will be in 20 for people to test at when it's available. So we've had some questions in the chat around that. Well, uh, I made everything on my side. So right. the, core, the core team needs to decide that. OK, gotcha. So if everyone's happy and everyone accepts the contributions, then it's fine. If yeah. not, uh, we will work on improving the contributions if the scope of the project and, and, and the clients want, want it. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So Laura, going back to the Office 365, I think people who have Office 365 are going to be the ones who will need to do that testing. I don't, you know, I don't know that um, the Sakai community is going to be able to coordinate getting an, a special account for that testing for everyone. Because uh, ultimately, it could be a Google integration, it could be a Dropbox, et cetera. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we re we will release a documentation about that, and mm -hmm. we will try to help the community uh, to test this this integration. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can use our because cool. basically it's, it's grant permissions to the experimental or grant permissions to the nightly. You grant permissions to your Sakai instance, mm -hmm. and then users can link their accounts. Right. Really, really cool stuff, Miguel. This is exciting. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Did I miss any questions in the chat that haven't been answered? If you if you want to repost your question, if you feel like it wasn't answered, please, please do, or just come on your mic. Did we address the question about uh, groups, uh, group assignments? Uh, I thought it was kind of addressed by Wilma's response that one submission for the whole group, just like other submissions, would would still work. That's my assumption as well. And Terry Golightly wants to know, does if it's just an audio recording, not a video recording, does is more time allowed? I think, Terry, it's probably the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same, it's per object. Three minutes of, of the object. Yeah. Yeah. As it, default, as default, it's video, but it's not supported by yet. Okay. So this is fantastic. We um, have about six minutes left. Kathy Feller, so it's not based on file size. It, I think, it is kind of based on file size as well. Kathy, did you say twenty megabytes, Miguel? Yeah. 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 Sakai default policy is 20 megabytes, and most of your institutions have extended that to more. Mm -hmm. But the default is 20 megabytes. And I need to guarantee that the feature works for everyone. So uh, the default configuration is safe. So because not many institutions have the same infrastructure and the same network. Right. So, Kathy, so, mileage varies depending on your institution and what your policies are. Yeah. Yeah, the fault is 20 megabytes, and you can extend that. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. So excited. Um, so let's wrap up. We're going to, um, we're not going to have a meeting on June 5th uh, because hopefully all of us or most of us will be at Open Aperio. But we do have an opening on June mm -hmm. 19th, which could be a, um, a repeat from open Aperio session. So let's keep our eyes and ears open. Or if you have a topic you want to share with the rest of us, um, please let me know or Matt Burgess, of course, or Wilma, and we will get you on the agenda. Any last comments or um, announcements from anyone? A oh, reminder, the Sakai UX call starts right after this call at 11 o'clock. Um, what room is that, Sean, in Big Blue Button? Room three. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thanks again to Miguel. This was super um, exciting stuff that you guys have been working on. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm going to share the chat. I'm going to save the chat and send it to you, Miguel, so that you have some of the comments. Um, 
that might be useful to you. Thanks, everybody. We can adjourn a few minutes early.